small. Nice. <laughs> I'll motor you forward. Don't expect Concorde crew to do things manually. <laughs> right, normally free crew on a Concorde, captain, first officer, and the flight engineer who looks after the systems. Most of the data here is the same as on uh, all aircraft. Uh, but of course, it's not a glass cockpit, it's uh, the older fashioned analog instruments. But, these two panels are basically identical. Airspeed, altitude, combo drifts up to about 60,000 feet. The compass, the horizontal situation indicator. The ADI, the attitude direction indicator. Um, artificial horizon. Also got flight director bars on it to uh, get flight guidance. Got strip vertical speed indicator. And those instruments are on all aircraft, whether it's a Concorde or a Cessna. We've also got a Mac meter. Most of don't have that. Common flies just over twice the speed of sound, just 204 mark. Also for the pilots, they've got radio magnetic indicators which point towards radio beacons. For the old-fashioned ADF and the more sophisticated DOR. Which you select. Undercarriage lights, four greens, green means down and locked. The red light would mean the door is not up locked. And the amber lights just mean the lock is out of sequence. Lever, a switch. <laughs> Drink those visor lever, it's all up and there at the moment. It does go down to 12 and quarters for takeoff. Yeah, right. Nice job. System for compressor and turbines. Fuel flow, 10 tonnes of fuel an hour without reheat. So, Throttles there, 10 tons an hour. You like the reheats, that goes up to 20 tons an hour. But only gain an extra 10, 20% performance. Temporary exhaust gases. Takeoff, you'll get to near 800 degrees. Front back to the server, 600 degrees, same cruise. That's the exhaust gas temperature. And the combustion chamber becomes a lot hotter. That panel is very much the same as this, although that does have a standby arc horizon. Standby altimeter, standby airspeed indicator, standby compasses up there. There's two systems, one standby and one. We've got the captain's, captain's system, captain system, first officer system, and a standby system. So if there are, it's a triple system. So in navigation, we've got three systems of inertial navigation. And that's accurate it's within about 12 or 11 miles between here and New York. Each one, and they'll mix the positions to get even more accurate. So, over three and a half thousand miles, you're uh, within 12 miles. Wow. That goes back to 1969, getting <laughs> man to the moon. pilot panel, full cap three auto land, so the aircraft can also land the main routes. Um, so, 600 bar after takeoff, you'll probably engage, or the front engage, and you'll disconnect on the final approach, or let it also land itself. Last warning panel, any problems? Oh, yeah. Come up with the light. If you get a problem, you get a light and a gong, and then you can look around and see what the problem is, roll, uh, okay. engine DI, oh, wind, wind and intake de-icing, windscreen wipers, navigation landing lights, other switches that need to be turned on for uh, flight. That's one system, that's two systems, so if one fails, the second system will automatically uh, come in. Engine shut down handles, any engine fires or problems, that will come up red, if it's flashing will be a fire warning. Just pull the handle and the engine will shut down. It will turn off the fuel, the pneumatics, the electrics. It will also close the valve flaps to uh, seal the bay. So there can't be a fire, because you shut off the fuel and you shut off the oxygen. So there are two reasons there can't be a fire. If any reason it didn't go out, you've got two fire bottles you can blow into the bay. To seal the bay. Some just uh, anti icing for the engines, uh, flying hydraulic selection for the flying controls, and a few other light switches. Radio still throttles, parking brake, steer it on the ground and move this. 
that steers, the the nose, that steers the nose wheel, which is 48 foot back there. I'll show you back where that is. In flight, pull back to go up, push forward to go down, to go left, to go right. And the rudder pedals down there to operate the rudder. And at the tops, that's the part of the uh, normal brakes, the differential braking. So is this all hydraulically operated? Isn't it? Yeah, electrical signaling with a hydraulic muscle. Hydraulics are 4,000 psi on board, which is 1,000 psi more than most aircraft. Uh, we get the extra 1,000 psi so we can physically make the components smaller. So we've got quite small components which operate at high pressure. This is what, the indicators as to the position? That's the flight control position indicator, yeah. It's called the alcohol, it means something in French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it tells you where the runners are, where the elevons are. They're all drooped down now because there's no hydraulic pressure on. Yeah. Um, the red lights that are on there before was comparison. It wasn't where it should be. It wasn't where it because there was no hydraulics on. Yeah. So we've got the radio communication stacks here. Two PHF transmitter receivers for short, short range. Two HFs for long range. They can also talk between themselves, talk to a cabin, or talk to the passengers on the PA. They can also receive the radio stations to make sure they listen to the right ones. Most of them have more sightings. See where it says cabin secure for takeoff. Mm. That bulkhead there, the crew in crews can get the hands in there and wobble the belt. Just there. You can get your hand in there in crews, known the crews to put the hat in there and get it stuck. Because that's one of the places the aircraft expands and contracts. But once it's on the ground, there's no way we'll ever get to the hangout until it goes flying again. Oh. Well into the sign flight. What sort of expansion do you get? About nine inches. inches. It's about two inches there, and again down the back. The back is on sliding joints. All, all the seat rails are on sliders mm -hmm. in the back. But the system has got their hydraulics, three systems, electrics, four systems, four AC generators, four TRUs for DC power, two batteries in case all goes pearl shaped. Um, air conditioning systems, there's four of those. Fuel tanks, 13 fuel tanks, numbered 1 to 11. There's two A tanks, a 5A and a 7A. Secondary engine instruments, mainly pressures and temperatures that the engineer needs to keep an eye on. Uh, pressurization system for the cabin. The cabin's pressurized to 6,000 feet. 2,000 feet less than most of the subsonics. Brake temperatures, just need to keep an eye on those. It displays the hottest brake temperature. If you want to look at the individual brake temperatures, just press the button and it will tell you. The clever part about the aeroplane is the intake control system to make sure the engines at all stages of the flight regime get good quality air into them and when that needle is vertical it means the shock wave is in the correct place in the intake so that the air at the front face of the engine is a maximum of 0.4 mark and there's an A system and the fact fails is a B system they both fail as manual intervention to keep the needle vertical and all those pair shown all locked up hydraulically they've got to move across hmm. the uh, engine demand in the intake of the fly. They've also got the handful two of them haven't they once they start the roll pair shape. Oh, oh you yeah, once it starts going wrong it doesn't do it off, it doesn't go wrong often. No, no, and a lot of the, Yeah, a lot of the intervention is, the first thing you do is go for this one. Cool, <laughs> blimey. <laughs> right, and then you go to your chapters and it tells them exactly what to do. It's all simple. Um, a lot of them they'll note from memory, they'll just read it through. 